Hi everyone, George here, and I'm going to present to you a uh, tips and tactics video concerning a very profound and very important question that one of my um, ASL slash Facebook buddies friend um, asked on Facebook, um, Charles Hammon. He asked basically, um, what scenarios would you recommend for a beginner um, in terms of uh, having a scenario where it's infantry only. Good morning, Charlie. And um, then ordinance. And lastly, vehicles only. Now, I was hard pressed to find a particular scenario that excludes all the other arms and has only one type of arm. But it's, um, I, I, I thought it was a good subject to uh, relate to you and uh, give you my thoughts on it. Now, it did pertain to uh, the opposing player being uh, a person of age of majority. And as a matter of fact, it was, uh, I believe, his son, Trey, to which I remarked, uh, Charles, you're a very smart man. Uh, now the child cannot bring you to Child Protective Services. Not that it's torture to play ASL, but um, as we all know, advanced squad leader, it's not for everybody. For example, Charles here, I mean, Charlie, Charlie, it's a she. Uh, Charlie, I've already tried to push Squadler to Charlie and she said no. She just pecked with her beak against her, her uh, perch once, twice to let me know she ain't going to play uh, Squadler. Now, if anybody's thinking of getting a mail order bride and forcing her or your significant other to play this game, that's a major strike as well. No, no, no. I do not recommend it. So if a person does approach you, and a couple of people have, um, uh, that uh, want to play this game, then go by, by all means, go ahead and, and show them and start with very simple scenarios. From my perspective, uh, he, Charles didn't want to exclude a starter kit. So uh, I would highly recommend uh, Commando Shenke because... Uh, basically, one one side is on the defense, one side is on the attack. Depending on which uh, how the person feels more comfortable, you can uh, coach them as to which side to take. Uh, other than that, there are uh, there is the uh, a good array of of uh, basic weaponry, support weapons, all in chapter A, and um, it's a very enjoyable game. Now, an intermediate level uh, game, remember your opponent is a person of age of majority, so they are mature enough to sit down and do some reading, and um, hopefully the, the interaction between you and your coachee will be good. So, scenario 105. Scenario 105, going to church. So it takes place in St. Martin de Fontenay, France, uh, August 1st, 1944, which means, uh, August, yeah, great. So, which means that the Germans uh, have uh, the possibility of attaining a Panzerfaust. Uh, so, that, that, that's always great. You got your hero, you got your demo charges. Now, it does introduce some order as well, but, um, you know, it's an intermediate level to ordinance. Uh, and at the same token, you're introducing the rate, rate of fire and, and basic ordinance, area fire, which is, you know, a good stepping stone to something more complicated. And also by SSR, uh, German squads may freely deploy, so you can uh, rip open the, uh, the essential sequence of play and let them uh, learn about how to deploy and how uh, both players can recombine in the rally phase, which is great. Now, let's all go on to ordinance, okay? Now, um, speaking of ordinance, I was hard pressed to find something that was solely gun to gun battles. So, um, for ordinance, my first recommendation is scenario seven dash for the bridge because you have two AT guns, your targets can be either infantry or armor okay 
And based on the special rules, there's some thinking to be done, number one. And number two, uh, number two, uh, it does not play the same way twice, right? And it's also, more importantly, it's also a game of movement. So, um, so I would highly recommend it. And it also, more importantly, introduces boar sighting, which is a great rule. All right. And a great rule uh, uh, that you should not forget time and time again when you're playing the defender. Uh, in a, a scenario, um, it, it is an asset to be able to bore sight. Okay, all right. A more intermediate level scenario involving uh, guns. Bow first bashing. How can you not get more out of ordinance than, than that? So it's a two board scenario. You got three bow first, and the intermediate aspect of it is the gliders. Uh, Charlie, uh, she approves. She approves. Charlie approves. She's singing her heart out. Time to take a little coffee break. There you go. You too, Charlie? Are you going to drink a little bit of coffee? Good for you, Charlie. Hmm. Nescafe Instant. Um, it's good. I like it. Yeah. So it introduces uh, uh, gliders. Now, that's Chapter E. You're both adults. Go to chapter E, read up on it. There's uh, quite a few tutorial videos on it and also some quick cheat sheets that you can get off the internet. And again, this will be a very enjoyable game, not because it takes place on the island of, of Crete, which is a place I'd like to visit one day, uh, but um, gliders are always interesting. Gliders are always interesting and probably your Kochi or your student can play the British and you can show them how the AA guns work. And once the gliders land, it's more or less uh, uh, the, the key element in this game is the Bofors against infantry. Yeah. Now for armor, which scenario do I recommend first? Scenario 125, First Crisis of Army Group North. So again, it is a bit of combined arms. There is a, a limbered AA gun there. Um, however, however, you have a, a Russian player with some heavy um, KV-1s and some light armor versus a German player that has uh, a medium tank, I would say, uh, some ordinance, so I would recommend the coach playing the Germans in this case and the coachy playing the armor. Um, and and uh, you have a 37L uh, gun as well. So it, it's a mixture of both ordinance and, and AFVs, but AFVs use the ordinance to hit table. And um, it, it looks quite balanced from my perspective, at least. No unit may use road bonus. That simplifies things, nor half movement uh, points for the road rate. I imagine that's because it probably takes place in, uh, well, it takes place in June, but perhaps the road in, the roads in that area, neck of the woods were, 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 was not great. And the German crew must set up as a passenger in the support uh, SPW 251-1 uh, with the 37 millimeter uh, AT gun in tow. So yeah, it's a bit complicated, um, but uh, it looks like uh, an enjoyable, evenly matched um, uh, game, and uh, the coach will be challenged, I believe will be challenged playing the Germans. There is the introduction of armor leaders as well, which is, is great. So um, how can you go wrong? Lastly, my, I, I chose two from each category, infantry, uh, guns, and then AFEs. Lastly, and maybe I should have introduced this one first before the other one, is um, Land of the Leviathans, ASL Scenario 127. 
Lipkri, Russia, 3rd July 1941. So in this case, there are no Panzerfaust to worry about. Um, there is some infantry, uh, and it is it is a monster of a game. And you're playing on three boards. Uh, however, uh, the Russian units, the Russian units, the Russian units seem to be overpowering the, the Germans. Now, in this game, I would recommend that the coach plays the German, and the coach he plays the armor, give them a fair chance to win, and, and, and show your skills. And if you are skillful with the Germans and you do win, I'm pretty sure that um, ultimately your son will not take you to uh, child protection services. Rather, they'll, uh, they'll uh, uh, appreciate your skills in, in, in playing with a unit that is not at an advantage and uh, learn. Yeah. And all inherent Russian crews have a morale of nine. Wow. So you get immobilized, you get hit again, you have to roll nine or less before you abandon your vehicle, you're good. Yeah, highly recommended. So that's that. Uh, the other thing that Charles asked me was um, if I saw his interview with Illuminated Rounds, and I have to admit that um, IR did, did have a good interview with Charles Hammond, and I would highly recommend that you watch that video um, in its entirety, not only the interview with Charles. And um, I, I did tell him, um, Charles, so the two chipmunks uh, inter interviewed you and stood back and was a bit surprised and shocked with my comment. And I guess it's because Charles did not see my, my video about uh, giving certain a ASL YouTubers a call sign. So I think that merits a call sign for Chuck and uh, Charles and Chad, okay, for, from Hasmo. Big shout out to Hasmo. And here's the character I picked, or the um, call sign. Call sign for... Charles Hammond and Chad Cummings is Spike and Chester. Congratulations, guys. You earned this um, uh, call sign. Enjoy it. Have a great weekend. Once again, this week, I noticed that the channel is growing, and I would like to thank everybody. All right. I'd like to thank everyone that was that's new and that has been here since the very beginning. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I greatly appreciate your support. Um, if I, I I owe a great thanks to someone, it's to Yanni Yotis, my youngest son, because he got me into into YouTube, and he was an Advent YouTuber at a young age. He would like to watch Lego videos, and I think garbage truck videos as well, as a toddler. Uh oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. His friends might tease him. And maybe not. So, have a great weekend, guys. Take care. Bye.